Hello everyone, today we are going to be looking a little bit at PGP. We're going to discuss very briefly how, attacker, how attackers approach breaking your privacy when you protect yourself with PGP. Um, we'll be making some other videos on this topic, but I want to start with what I believe is the simplest aspect of PGP security, which is protecting your private key. So the easiest way that an attacker, or rather the simplest way for an attacker to try to decrypt messages that you have encrypted with PGP would be to try to steal your key. So your key is only protected um, by a passphrase and by being located in your user's home directory, right? They don't need super user access or anything like that. <laughs> to access it, you just do... <laughs> Looks like I, uh, I damaged my key a little bit. Yeah, here we go. So I'm gonna show you this on this command line because for whatever reason, VS Code is uh, not happy about this. So we just do this command, gpg export secret keys dash dash armor. We type in whatever passphrase we have and out comes a beautiful PGP key. Well, it's supposed to be beautiful. This one's not formatted very beautifully, but no big deal. So it's that easy, right? Anyone with user level access can run this command and someone could write a Python script that literally just, you know, runs that command and sends the output to their attacker controlled server. I'll make something called attack pgp.py, you know, import um, OS, or rather, I believe there's something called get command output in Python, Python get command output. I forget the, uh, the specific method. I was, <laughs> since I've been searching all this stuff, uh, Google got a little bit suspicious of me. Okay, so we're going to use subprocess check output, you know, request stop post, and then we'll go ahead and say like, you know, attacker URL, and then we'll send JSON and we'll say PGP secret will equal, you know, GPG export secret keys. And armor is important because that makes it as key readable. Otherwise it's this crazy binary output. <laughs> and Python wants dictionary keys to be strings. And that's it. Obviously, this does not address the issue of the passphrase, though, right? This assumes that there is no passphrase protecting it. So maybe, hey, you know, I've got some kind of passphrase that protects me. As long as I have a passphrase, they can't write a script to do this. Obviously, you could write a script that sends input to check output. I mean, that's not impossible. But um, it's even simpler than that because your GPG web ring is actually stored in a directory in home. If you can see this right here, I'll try to make it a little bigger. Called dot GNU PG. Okay, you have your pub ring, your private keys, you know, and here you go. It has data about the keys, has everything you need. Everything that this PG, that this GPG command is doing is just pulling data from this thing right here in your home directory. <laughs> so, you know, obviously it's not hard for them to, you know, read these files, right? Literally just using open and read and all the normal stuff, you know, using os.lister to get the contents that can be called recursively and sending those over. In fact, let's just really quick write a simple crawler that someone would do, use to do exactly that. So the only thing is I forget Python get home dirt. I know it's in path, but Let's see, my apologies. I, I should have prepared all of this, but I, I find it more fun to do it live with you, so. Yeah, here we go, path clip. So as of Python 3, this is the way you used to do it, and this is the way I'm thinking of that you do now. 
So we need to know their home directory because it's home slash dot GNU PG. Okay. So we'll go ahead and say GNU PG dir equals our home directory plus slash dot GNU PG. Okay, just to make sure that's same, we'll print that out. And yep, we see that that is indeed the directory. And now we can write a little crawler, right? We can say, you know, def, I don't know, find all files, or how about this? Crawl directory. It'll be a generic function that crawls directories. And we'll say, you know, base directory. Okay, easy peasy. Now we just need to basically make a simple recursive function that will get all of these directories. So I'll just say for, you know, for entry in os.lister baster. We'll say entry equals equals our GNU PG dir plus or rather you know what it should be sorry entry equals base dir plus entry. There we go. Now what we're going to want to say is if it is another directory, we're going to recursively access it, right? So what we'll do is we'll try to get all the files and then we'll yield ones that aren't directories. So basically we'll say if is dir entry, then crawl it, right? Else we will yield it so that this will be a generator function. So we'll say yield entry. Okay, so I forget how to check if something is a directory. It's not something I do every day. So it's path.isdir. That's perfectly fine. And now we can see if this actually works. So I will just say print, and we'll have to yield from since this is recursive. Oops. So we will print a list of everything that we can yield from here starting at our GNU PG dir just to make sure this gives us what we want. Okay, it looks like I'm missing some random module. Okay, I mess around a lot with this system, so I end up with weird. <laughs> I end up with all kinds of weird issues. This one just says I need Python 3 GDBM. I wonder what library is even trying to use this. Oh, email mine. Okay, that should not be here. No wonder. Sorry, I had all these weird imports that I didn't mean to have. And it wants to know if I meant isdir, which 
is exactly what I meant. So we'll just change that to say is underscore dir. Okay. I'm just going to print these entries because I want to see what exactly is the input that's getting. Okay, so I see what's happening here. When I'm saying plus, I'm not including the slash. So I'm getting files that don't exist. And I really should be using a... Uh, I really should be joining the path properly rather than just manually putting in a... Uh, <laughs> rather than just manually putting in a slash. So I'm going to do that as well. Okay, I'm already importing OS, so that should be fine. So I think I can do that. I'm not exactly sure. Oops. S.path.join. I want the base dir and the entry to be joined together. And let's see, that looks good to me. Let's see if that really doesn't exist. It does exist. Okay. So let's see what's going on with this error. Sorry, GPG does a lot of kind of black magic-y <laughs> stuff, so. So who knows why exactly it's complaining. So it wants to check if it's a directory and it's saying it can't. So we'll just go ahead and look up Python is dir and look at what causes this error. Do it with quotes. And we find this Reddit thread. Ah, okay, I'm using isdir wrong apparently. So when I want to use path.isdir, what I'm supposed to do, okay, is say, make this into a path object, and then see if entry isdir. There we go, much better. All right, instead of making these path objects, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn them back into strings, get rid of that print, and let's see. Yeah, here we go. So this is a lot better. Um, I get a list of paths, right? Sorry for all the bugs, by the way. Um, live coding is kind of like that. Okay, there we go. Here we go, this is, so these are all of the files that are part of my GNU PG key ring. They're the things that have my, my secrets in them, they're the things that have my public keys, it's everything you would ever need. So from here, what's the attacker gonna do? Okay, what they're gonna do is say GNU PG files equals this, all right? And I'll get rid of that. And they can just loop through these. They can say, you know, for f in that, and just do the same thing they did before. Requests.post, which will allow them to send it to an attacker server, and pass this JSON value here. That will just say something like, you know, file name which will be f and file contents, which will be, okay, so I need to open it. So we'll say with open f as, you know, gpg file, file contents equal gpg file dot read. 
Some of these files might be weird or might have some odd permission, even though it's not one we necessarily really, really need. So we can just add a simple try accept. And there we go. So here you go. I mean, this is 24, 23 lines of Python code to just hijack somebody's entire GNU PG library right off of their system, right? Um, GPG, like the PGP protocol and stuff is not, is not necessarily vulnerable to this. This is just the way it happens to work. It happens to be created in your home directory with everything right there, readable. You know, we can even do an ls-l to see what the permissions are. Oops. You can say ls-l and you know, we see all of this stuff is readable to the whole to the whole thing. There's some stuff that's super user here. But even if that stuff is is, you know, readable to everybody, um, we still have that pgp command that we can easily control as this user. So even if that has the sticky bit set, we can say like you know, which, oops. So even if you try to make it so, oh yeah, well look, these things have a sticky bit set, this thing is blah, 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 it's only readable by whoever. It basically, it basically just doesn't help you. Um, because of the fact that you can just access it with the command. So if we go in here, yeah, we see these files that, are owned by the same user that you're accessing the system as. So they're only readable and writable by the owner of the file, which is good because it means other users on the same system can't read it. But if you have user level access to someone's PC, it's probably as the user that they normally are realistically. Not always, I mean, it's better than nothing, but, but yeah, these are readable to this user, right? It would be one thing if it was only super users that you have to pseudo access or whatever, but no, none of that's the case. So what do you do? Well, what you can do is use a device like the YubiKey Okay, um, a YubiKey is something that stores your key on a physical hardware device. All right, you can also store your key inside of a password manager. So it's not just sitting there on your system. I was gonna say unencrypted, but it's not unencrypted, it's encrypted by the passphrase. So um, that's probably the biggest thing is that what protects your key if someone steals it is the passphrase. You wanna have a strong passphrase and you can also change your key throughout a conversation using newer and newer keys. That gives you a kind of semblance of forward secrecy. The reason that matters is because getting your key stolen, even if you have a strong password, passphrase, I mean, kind of sucks. I mean, it definitely sucks because the attacker can just smash that thing with a ton of compute resources until they crack your passphrase. Uh, so unless you have a really strong passphrase, somebody can just go on AWS, buy a ton of you know, EC2 time, run some scripts on it. And there are scripts that already work with GPG, right? Here we have brute force GPG. Boom, you just type a command and it'll go, it'll go to work. So not to mention um, if they have user level access, they can change your shell path so that when you type GPG, you enter a version of the program controlled by the attacker that they can use to fish your password. So if they have user level access to your system, PGP is very vulnerable to say the least. All right, so those are some issues with PGP. Um, one final thing is that because this is stored in a user's home directory, uh, this GNU PG, it's sometimes accidentally uploaded publicly because some developers and basically nerds, just people like us, like to upload what they call their dot files to places like GitHub and their personal blog. They're just configurations for your system. And GNU, this, you know, this, this directory, this GNU PG directory is definitely a dot file, right? So it easily gets up to, uploaded and people accidentally leak their keys that way all the time. So be careful. We're going to go over some more different types of attacks on PGP in the future. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the most basic way you could attack it. Getting user level access to a system. PGP does not stand up well uh, if used in the default way without much thought to a strong passphrase. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope we can be together soon. Bye-bye.